Greetings and salutations everybody, Lord X here coming at you once again with a brand new pickups video. That's right, we've gone through two months of the year, so it's time to catch up on what I've been picking up. I didn't mean that to rhyme, but it kind of did at the time. I'll stop now. Anyways, uh, not a whole lot this month. Uh, I've got a variety of things, but nothing like over the top. I haven't got like stacks upon stacks of things. Let's dive into what I've picked up. I'm going to start with the digital games that I picked up in January and February. Uh, in January, I picked up Sinran, Sinran, Kagura, Sinran Kagura Estival Versus for the Vita. I have no shame. Uh, Resident Evil 6 because I thought it would be funny if I did a new uh, Suffers That series. Just never really got the ball rolling on that. Uh, picked up on the PS4, by the way. I started up, and within the first five minutes was reminded just how bad Resident Evil 6 really is. Uh, that was it for the digital games in January, and in February, the two digital games I picked up were Marvel Ultimate Alliance and Ultimate Alliance 2 on the PlayStation 4. They were on one of the flash sales that popped up for like half off, so I'm like, you know what, seems kind of appropriate. I'll, I'll pick up those two now individually. Been playing through the first one a little bit here and there, and yeah, that, I love the story in that game. The game itself, though, doesn't really hold up that well, which is a shame. Uh, should have just kept my good memories and not go back to it. That being said, though, it's a fun retro kind of romp to go back to it. But yeah, that was it for the uh, digital games that I picked up. So let's get into the physical games that I picked up within January and February. And these are kind of mixed up here. Granted, only well, two of these I picked up in February. Alright, so digital side of things, and the only Nintendo game I picked up in January, Dragon Quest VIII Journey of the Cursed King. And I freaking hate the Canadian covers, because look at that. They put that there covering up the villain's face. That is so friggin' annoying right there. It almost makes me want to see if I can purchase a... Uh, U.S. case just so I can slide it in and not have this right here. Very, very, very bad poor placement of that Square Enix. Really bad to be quite honest with you. It ruins the box art in my opinion. So simple, but so annoying. That being said, fucking love this game. One of my favorite JRPGs of all time. It was my very first Dragon Quest game. And I've had the question asked to me before if I could recommend a Dragon Quest to start with. This one right here, Dragon Quest VIII. It's much more approachable than uh, the older Dragon Quest games. Uh, I believe the original was made by Level 5, too, with a partnership with... Uh, wasn't Square Enix at the time. But yeah, anyways, awesome game. This got new levels into it two new playable characters into it that were in the original game. Uh, these two right here, I forget their names now. But yeah, awesome game. Highly, highly recommend it. And secondly, on the handheld side of things, for the Vita, I picked up Shantae Half Genie Hero, my very first Shantae game that I've ever played. And I've been having fun with it. I've turned it on uh, the odd night and played through a little bit of it. The humor is pretty good. Uh, maybe a little juvenile at times, but still really fun game. Fun uh, controls and gameplay. Way forward, just doing great work. And I got the Risky Beats edition of this game. Uh, so it came with the soundtrack, so that was pretty cool too. It's a, it's a really good soundtrack. I'm really digging it. 
All right, that being said, let's dive into the physical games that I picked up. First off, this was a Christmas gift, actually. Well, I asked for the money for it for Christmas, and it came out on the 24th of January, and I picked it up in Yakuza 0. And I have since finished the game, put in over a hundred hours into this game, and man, oh man, it's fantastic. If you have been a fan of the Yakuza games, you're going to love this. It's really great to see a young Kai Kairu and a young Majima. Because, man, you really see how they evolve into the characters that we've known in the uh, games from 1 to 5. It's really cool. I will say this if you're playing the game. Watch the credits all the way through. <laughs> there is a post credit scene. And it had me giddy. It had me smiling on my face just because it was a really good moment, I'll put it that way. Uh, gameplay into it, awesome. The story, really serious. It's a really serious story. Mixed in with a game where you can recruit a chicken to be a manager of your real estate firm. Yeah, that can happen in this game. And that went viral, too, I believe, when the game first launched. So, tons of mini games. Like, if you like playing Mahjong, for example, I suck at it. I have no idea how to play it. You can play full on Mahjong in this and get distracted by that. There's poker, there's blackjack, there's roulette, uh, there's a god, like five, six, seven other Japanese games, a bunch of dice games into this. You know, like physical rolling the dice, not dice the company. Um,. There's cat fighting. You can go watch erotic videos, which is actually live action videos. Just like short little 60 second at most clips of like Japanese girls in bikinis just lying around. It's weird, but it's in there. Um, what else can you There, There's the Sega arcades where you can play Outrun or a Space Herder. And there's a uh, motorcycle game in there as well that you can unlock, which is cool. Just old Sega games, and they're in there in full. Like, you can complete Outrun within this game. That is just so friggin' awesome, if you ask me. There, you can spend so much time in this. And I mentioned the real estate thing. That was like a side story that you could do. And I spent like, God, at least 20 hours just doing that side story. And raking up money into that. So yeah, highly recommend Yakuza 0. It's a fantastic brawler. It's funny. It has a really serious story, which is really awesome. Cannot recommend this game enough. And I'm pretty sure when the year comes to an end, this is going to be pretty high up there in my top 10 for the year. Saying it now. Calling it now. The only thing that can really topple it? Dang and rough of E3. As of right now, anyway. Next up, had not started on this yet, but I really wanted to. Another game which I'll be talking about very shortly has taken over my time now after Yakuza. But I'm hoping to get started on this game in the very near future. Uh, especially if I don't end up buying anything or buying that much over the next couple of months. I probably will have the time to play this. Tales of Berseria, the newest entry in the Tales franchise. It's gotten a lot of love, a lot of praise after the rather disappointing Zestaria last year. People are saying this is really good. It's a back to form kind of for the Tales game. The hero or anti hero of this game is really cool. Violet or Velvet? Uh, Velvet. There it is. Velvet Crow. No relation to Russell Crow, I'm sure. But uh, yeah. Really awesome. Cannot wait to dive into this game. And I really wanted to, but Yakuza was just so damn awesome. It took up all of my time before said coming game came out. But not uh, this game. I uh, went to EB Games one day. I know, ooh, GameStop, EB Games. I know, I know. But it's not that bad. The one I go to is pretty good. The people there, they already know me that well, so... They don't really bog me down with, subscribe to this, pre-order this, you can do this and this. They, they don't really do that, so they're awesome like that. Uh, but this game was on sale for 
30 bucks off, so I picked it up. It's God Eater 2, and it comes with a God Eater Resurrection for free because this is the Day 1 edition, even though I got this way, 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 way after Day 1. I've been meaning to play Resurrection. I bought it on the Vita on one of the flash sales. Have it now on PS4 thanks to this, so that's cool. Uh, looks really awesome. The artwork kind of uh, screams Ruby, the Rooster Teeth series, but yeah. Really nice. I like the slide on cases. There's the back. There you go. And finally, by the time this pickups video goes up, I should have my unboxing video up of this game. It's Horizon Zero Dawn. And this is the steel book that came in the uh, collector's edition. And I heard. Oops. I apologize if that sounded really rough. I hit the mic. And I have that upside down. Whoop, whoop. Boom. And there's the back. Uh, I've only put in a short bit of time so far with the Horizon. Like, I have not fought any of the giant creatures yet. Just the smaller seekers and whatnot. But, game looks gorgeous. The photo mode is awesome. Let's just say that. I'm, I haven't been uh, posting any screenshots because I don't want to spoil anything for anybody that might be holding off for a bit. But yeah, loving the game so far. Really cool. Uh, I know a lot of people will hate the name Alloy. I'm fine with it. Though I'm used to weird, odd names from like anime and whatnot, so Alloy is... Not that weird to me, I guess. I'm used to it. So yeah, really awesome. Uh, I should have an unboxing video of my Collector's Edition up, or going up soon. If it's up, I'll try and link it at the end of this video. So yeah, really cool, really digging it. Gorilla Games has done a fantastic job on this. And that does it for the games, folks. So let's move into the movies. All right, movie-wise, for uh, February, yeah, I picked, yeah, I got both of these in February. Um, HMV Canada is going out of business. They're shutting down all their stores across Canada, which is a really heartbreaking because I love going there. It was the easiest, quickest place for me to go pick up a movie from where I live. Now I gotta like catch a bus to go to Walmart if I want to pick up any Marvel movies. So that kind of sucks. Or I'll probably just start pre-ordering them on Amazon or whatever. But they're going out of business, so they've got a lot on sale. I picked up these two uh, right here for 20% off at the time. First off, we have Full Metal Alchemist, The Sacred Star of Milos. And this is a really cool movie. I saw this in the theater, actually. So when I saw it, it was still there, still available. I was like, you know what? I'm going to divulge a little bit and pick this up. So that's really awesome. Really, really, really glad that I have this in my collection now. It has the Blu-ray too, and it has a bit of heft to it. I think it might actually include the DVD version as well. Yeah, it does. Uh, next up is an anime that I had never heard of before, but it was 17 bucks, and I picked it up. Onai? Onai? Uh, the complete series, episodes 1 to 2. Feast your eyes on a host of desirable darlings in this sassy, comedic romp from the dirty little minds that brought you Baka and Test and Hayate the Combat Butler. Never heard of any of those. But there you go, there's some screenshots. I'm kind of fine with the kind of cutesy type of anime style, the comedy, like slice of life comedy animes. I really like those. Just because life is stressful and those are just like a fun little romp. Though I do like the ones that go super dark at the end. Go watch Shuffle. You'll know what I mean. Uh, but anyways, yeah, I picked that up since it was on sale. And the final thing that I picked up in February. Technically I picked this up on March the 1st, but it was a February 28th movie, goddammit. So I'm going to include it in these pickups. It's Doctor Strange from Marvel Studios. This movie is... Awesome. I love it to death. Benedict Cumberbatch, eggs Benedict Cucumberbatch, as I like call him, is a great actor and great in the role. It's absolutely awesome that we have him in the Marvel Cinematic Universe now. Cannot wait to see him interacting with the uh, other characters. So yeah, really cool. 
great story. Uh, I know, ooh, Marvel doing another origin story. But this one works for Doctor Strange. You kind of needed his origin story. But it's done in a really good fashion. And as far as origin stories go, I think this is the best one since Iron Man 1. Just saying it. I think it is awesome. And that does it for movies. So now, let's dive into the collectibles. Alright, first off, we have one of those little blind bag on openings. I got Poison Ivy. The DC bombshell ones. These are actually really nice. They come in a steel tin can, too. That's really cool. I got her. Now, I think this guy came in after my last pickups video went up. Or I put it up and I forgot to include him. Or maybe I did. Actually, I think I did. It was a Bloodborne plushie. This dude. I think I included him in my last video, but not sure. So, there he is again. Alright, you all know, folks, that I love Funkos. I have collected a ton of them. So, why not another Funko? Cosmo. The uh, telepathic Russian space dog. Who you saw in the first Guardians of the Galaxy movie. We're getting a lot of shine there. There is the actual comic book version of him right there. Cosmo is an awesome character. Really hope he has another cameo in Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. And next up, these are a new collectible for me. I think I might have did shown one of these off in the uh, X-Men blind uh, or X-Men Collector's Corpse video. I think I did one of that. I can't remember. I'm pretty sure I did. But anyways, they got new rock candy ones. And they put in a set of four for Marvel. And I managed to get all four. First off, She-Hulk. There she is right there. And there are the other four. Which include Captain Marvel. The one I really wanted to get. And was actually the first one I managed to get. Jane Foster Thor. Which is a really... Really nice design. Let's see if we can get a little better of a close up there. Kind of hard to see, but you get the picture. And finally, oops, sorry, hit the mic again. <laughs> and Spider Gwen. There you go. And folks, I would say we're done, but we got some books. First off, you may know Yahtzee Croshaw, the uh, reviewer of Zero Punctuation. Well, he's a writer as well, and he's done a couple of books. He did Mog World. And he did uh, Jam, two of my favorite books of all time. They're so funny. They're well written. Each of them has a great story. Cannot recommend them enough. And he put out a new one. We'll save the galaxy for food. And the little uh, note on the back here is a not quite epic science fiction adventure about a down on his luck galactic pilot caught in a cross galaxy struggle for survival. Uh, there's, you can just read that right there real quick if you want to. That was a little blurry. I apologize. Okay, you get the picture. Anyways, I've started it. Already I can tell it's in his uh, same kind of humor vibe, so really, really looking forward to actually diving in and reading this. It'll be the first book I've read in a while now. And finally... Since I managed to get this for 34 bucks on Amazon, I decided to go for it. Uh, I saw Happy Console Gamer's review or, or his video of it. And I'm like, I need that in my collection as well. <sighs> the Legend of Zelda Art and Artifacts book from Dark Horse Comics. Now, this is a great companion piece to the Hyrule Historia. Except for one thing. It's like twice as long. There are four, over 400 pages in this book. And it has art from every single Legend of Zelda game. Alright, even the original art, which, let's see if I can pull up a picture here. Like that. That is absolutely fantastic. And you go through, they have character models in here. Uh, 
Some of them are art, some of them are like the CGI renders. Let's see if I can actually find. I've gotten way past it. There's promotional art in here. There's pixel art in here, which I was trying to find. Uh, there's some more right there. That is from uh, Orcarina of Time. There's the items. Like, it is such a fantastic book. Like, here is the items for uh, Orcarina of Time. Really falling on all Orcarina of Time stuff here. Here's the Adventure of Link. Zelda 2. <laughs> Surprised we don't have the, uh, well, I guess, like, some of the CDI games are not in here, which were really weird, and I guess Nintendo just wants to forget about them, but you got Triforce Heroes, Skyward Sword, there's uh, Link to the Past, and Four Swords Adventure art. Like, it is such a good book, and one of my favorite sections right here showing all of the box art, and you have, like, the Japanese box art there as well. And the titles for both uh, North America and Japan. Uh, it is such a fantastic art book. And I'm really, really glad that I decided to pick it up. It's great. And if you're a fan of Legend of Zelda, or like, even myself, like A Link to the Past and A uh, Link Between Worlds, those are probably my two favorite Legend of Zelda games. Never really did finish Orcarina of Time. Never played Majora's Mask. Never played Skyward Sword. I like the old school stuff, but at the same time, I really love and appreciate the art of uh, The Legend of Zelda as it's gone on through the years. The different styles, like Wind Waker had its own unique charm to it. And even though with the new Breath of the Wild, like the art for that game is so nice. That's the one thing about the Legend of Zelda series. It has such phenomenal artwork into it. So really glad I have this book. But anyways, folks, we've gone on for way too long in this pickups video. Maybe I should start doing them monthly again so they'd be like less than 10 minutes long. Anyways, thank you so much for watching. I've been Lord X. You have been awesome. And I will catch you next time.